so generative ai is this new uh, sort of uh, field um, or i should say an inflection point in the journey of machine learning around us where uh, for the first time uh, uh, ml actually understands natural language uh, it understands the semantic meanings of images uh, and because of all those capabilities a ton of new things are possible of course one famous product we all know and and uh, at least i am uh, now pretty much used to um, uh, using every day is chat gpt um the perfect sort of example and display of the new capabilities that exist in front of us uh, replica uh, so this is a product that allows you again to chat with uh, a bot um and um uh, the primary use cases for people uh, you know that are just on their own don't have a partner or something in their life and they want someone to talk to apparently people are getting addicted to these agents i just read somewhere i think some woman decided to marry her bot um and got a lifetime subscription for replica this is real this is all happening so machines now understand language uh in its full form uh they understand grammar they also understand the semantic meaning of things what i mean by semantic meanings like for example um uh, i have a very cute dog is one sentence i have a very cute cat is another sentence uh these two sentences should be very close to each other compared to oh i have a fast moving car Uh, I want to talk about technology now, right? Because um, you're going to kind of uh, double dip on some of the more exciting stories that uh, that you can have for us, right? Uh, what are the tech? Uh, let's say the technology trends or disruptions that you are most excited about today. As cliched as it sounds, uh, I'm going to say this: generative AI. <laughs> But uh, I knew it. <laughs> one on which I'm I'm spending my my. Okay, just just a quick pause there, right? When you say generative AI for the audience, right? how would you explain it uh, why is it so powerful and what is it yeah so i and and i'll also clarify here when i say generative ai i mean the whole plethora of large language models uh, you know text to image models everything everything included um so generative ai is this new uh, sort of uh, field um, or i should say an inflection point in the journey of machine learning around us where uh, for the first time uh, uh, ml actually understands natural language uh it understands the semantic meanings of images uh and because of all those capabilities a ton of new things are possible of course one famous product we all know and and uh, at least i am uh, now pretty much used to um uh, using every day is chat gpt um the perfect sort of example and display of the new capabilities that exist in front of us uh and i understand people getting afraid of it but honestly um used right it can it can supercharge efficiency and one uh, that i would ask everyone listening to this podcast to definitely i mean not necessarily chat gpt choose your assistant whatever whatever assistant you like but just try out some of these generative ai tools to supercharge your daily working efficiency um it can really make a difference um uh, on a daily basis and in the future i think if you're someone who is not using those tools uh, i suspect those would be the ones that would be you know more easy to sort of um jump ahead of uh versus people who right. are ai enabled uh in fact i can see every single job being more ai enabled and more efficient um um very soon yeah uh you you mentioned large learning models right and uh even the the ceo of uh, open ai had come a, come up and said that um you know this era is going to be over soon of large learning models can you explain to us what exactly llms are um and what the future actually holds right and why they are so powerful Yeah, so large uh, language models are basically um, 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 an uh, evolution of the older version of deep learning uh, models. So the older version, um, you know, uh, researchers that are far smarter than me discovered that um, if you just increase the number of parameters on a model, that is when things start to get interesting. So instead of the very simplistic capabilities we had in the past of pattern matching you know you you probably have seen all those apps that we had right that can tell this is a dog this is a cat or 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 this this these numbers are probably 0 1 2 3 um instead of those very simplistic capabilities finally like machines now understand language uh in its full form uh they understand grammar they also understand the semantic meaning of things 
what I mean by semantic meaning, like, for example, um, uh, I have a very cute dog is one sentence. I have a very cute cat is another sentence. Uh, these two sentences should be very close to each other compared to, oh, I have a fast moving car. Uh, so the semantic meaning of things, which was, um, you know, not possible in the past, um, is now possible with these um, large language models. And because of that, now you can imagine, you know, um, putting in all sorts of unstructured data. Um, and again, to simplify unstructured data, what I mean by that is your email, your chats, your logs, um, everything that doesn't quite have, you know, the SQL table like structure to it. Uh, they all can be fed into these models and now we can derive insights from it. So, uh, so you can have an assistant that searches all your documents and answers a question for you. You can have a model that searches Google for you if you ask it a question and then tells you the answer directly, uh, right? So many of these things which were not possible in the past are now possible. Right. You know, uh, we're also speaking about a lot of, um, you know, uh, kind of, I would say, peripheral implementations, right, for uh, for chat GPT, whether, uh, what was the other one I was using the other day called auto GPT, right, uh, where, you, where you can generate code for uh, for an idea that you had, right? Are there some uh, implementations that you are particularly very excited about um, at this point? I think character AI is super interesting. I think uh, replica is also interesting in a sad way. What are they about? Just a quick, uh, quick sense. Character AI is uh, you can go to this website and you can basically start chatting to a bot that basically answers like Elon Musk or Bill Gates or any other celebrity that you like. Um, so, uh, you can, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a, it's an interesting sort of take on, uh, uh, you know, allowing you to talk to your favorite celebrity. Um, there is, what's the most mind blowing, uh, one that you have, right? That uh, some technology that you, you know, not expect most people to be acquainted with, right? Whether that's through your course of your work or, you know, uh, in general, that's just blowing you apart, blowing your mind right now. Yeah. So, uh, um. I mean, I wouldn't say I didn't expect this, but um, it still blew my mind. Uh, Replica. Uh, so this is a product that allows you again to chat with uh, a bot. Um, and um, uh, the primary use cases for people, uh, you know, that are just on their own, don't have a partner or something in their life, and they want someone to talk to. Apparently, people are getting addicted to these agents. I just read somewhere, I think some woman decided to marry her bot. Um, and got a lifetime subscription oh, wow. for replica. This is real. This is all happening. So the movie Her is uh, pretty much live and, and kicking right now. Uh, in fact, there are, you know, cases on, on Facebook groups about replica bots, people getting addicted to them and thinking that the bot is cheating on them or something like that. So it's just, it, it just blows my mind how much, you know, um, uh, these things are happening. Like all those futuristic sci-fi movies, uh, that was just movies uh, and and Black Mirror. It's all it's all real. Right. I remember, uh, you know, in college, there, I was in college at the time, right? There was some Big Bang episode, uh, Big Bang Theory episode, where uh, the the Indian guy uh, starts dating Siri, right? Uh, because he's uh, and and that seemed like oh, that's so far fetched, right? And uh, the funny enough, right? You are actually in that age now where uh, where people are looking to basically date bots, right? Uh, which kind of poses an interesting uh, dilemma as well, right? Uh, how do you trust anybody online to be human at this point, right? If you are if you're single and you're you're on a dating website, how do you know whether because uh, AI can generate a fake image for you, it can answer for you, it can answer in the right way. Just it knows how to kind of hit those nodes, right? To make you know certain uh, generate certain emotions. Uh, so. Is that something that uh, we have to all be aware of or just kind of as uh, social scientists be curious about? What is your perspective on that? I mean, I'm not the right person to be advising on how to use uh, these apps much. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one thing and it's not just about these apps, right? It's, it's about everything. Um, you call customer support um, tomorrow, you know, there'll be, um, I mean, there already are bots, but there'll be better bots now. Um, you, you know, go to a store, um, you look at products, you again might be interacting with an interface versus a person. So this is going to happen more and more in our lives, uh, consistently. So, um, now yeah, I think my, my advice would be, uh, one is just, you know, that some, some things done in real life are better, uh, versus online. <laughs> so, so, so meeting people, um, uh, outside of that, um, 
there will be there will there'll be a range of companies in the future that will help detect human versus ai uh, that will tell you this these will be security companies i'm, I'm guessing um, that will tell you fake content versus real content. Again, I mean, the, the implications are vast, right? You, as you can imagine, like you can have a fake image of the president um, or our prime minister or whatever and, and uh, be completely misleading. Uh, so the implications are ridiculous. Um, so for sure, right. we will collectively as a society need these products and tools that will help in figuring out fake versus real. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think, um, I think there was just about a, a couple of weeks back, there was um, there was a fake news report that the Pentagon had been attacked, right? Um, and there was an image and everything, and uh, there was a brief dip in the U.S. markets, right? Um, and it is, and because you know information is moving so fast now, uh, it's it's very it's highly likely, right, that the person who did this was very aware that it's going to get discovered in maybe I want to say two minutes. But two minutes was enough for him to put in an algorithm in place to to extract his profits and and get out, right? And uh, it means that somebody probably lost money because of that, right? Uh, do you think that the governments will have a huge role to play? And uh, how do kind of governments come up to grips with this sort of innovation, right? Because they're, they're always seen as laggards, right? So how do you kind of uh, build guardrails for something which is probably outside your uh, your circle of competence. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, see, this is definitely, I mean, this is an ever, not, not necessarily AI, but like all technology has been um, uh, an ever chasing target for governments alike, right? They always have to catch up to technology and, and uh, form regulations laws. Autonomous driving was another sort of space. Um, yeah. And similarly with AI, there's a lot of chatter right now and rightfully so about AI safety. There's obviously these, you know, uh, disambiguation against fake versus real that we need to sort out. There is, um, you know, who is liable in case something happens. Uh, there is, um, um, you know, general, like, what will be the economic implications for all of this? Because the economic implications, in my opinion, will also be very vast. Uh, so how do you deal with all of this, right? So these are not easy questions to answer. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of change ahead of us as uh, humanity. Um, I don't think I mean it. I, I mean, I don't mean this in a light way, and I do mean it in a. And, I, and I'm optimistic. Every technology shift is uh, rough in the short term, but in the longer term, it, it unlocks a lot more. Um, so I think there's a lot right. of uh, there's a lot of questions ahead of us to be answered. No, absolutely. And uh, what are your opinions, right? Uh, basically, uh, sitting on on your side of mm. the table that uh, that Indians can do or Indian founders should be doing to to build generally good AI companies and how can the government help with that? I mean, I think it's the problem is multifold, right? And and uh, um, there's uh, talent, there's infrastructure, there, there's access to everything. I and mean, one thing I'll clarify though, the early state funding ecosystem in India is very strong right now. Uh, there are definitely, you know, funds actively looking to deploy and to partner with uh, world changing founders, uh, especially in generative AI. So for sure, there's a there's a want, uh, there's a want, there's intention uh, to want to partner with founders. Um, I think we're just barely, at least from my my lens, I I'm I think I'm now seeing some activity in the ecosystem. I see so many hackathons, I see so many meetups and mixers. I see, you know, any any mixer uh, that I sort of go to now, and there's like someone presenting. I, I end up learning a ton. Um, so I think now I'm seeing it's been a little slow to start. Uh, but I'm hoping that changes in the next few months to six months. Yeah, I think uh, I hope uh, I hope so too, right? Because uh, the entire uh, India becoming uh, whatever ten trillion dollar economy, etc., right, is actually going to hinge on uh, how well our uh, overall digital and tech development happens, right? Uh, and I think uh, one of the things that uh, you know, uh, that I just as I was telling you, asking the question, right? And I was thinking about the same. Uh, I think uh, India lacks um, the actual amount of risk capital which is required, right? For uh, for artificial intelligence startups to to really really prosper, because uh, you need to take risk, right? The capital has to be at risk, and uh, and there are angels, right? Uh, they were my they are my LPs. Everyone's kind of ready to kind of uh, take that risk, but the problem actually becomes that. Um, when you're uh, when you say on one side that hey let's make in India, 
um, on the other hand you know the stuff that you're doing is not letting you make money in india because of taxation right uh, that becomes a huge hurdle right to get large capital in because their calculation is that look uh, even if i do make the money right government's going to take about your government is going to take away 30% um, in in capital gains i will not make money yeah it's different for nris a little bit here and there right but uh the calculation in an investor's mind is that yeah i i don't i have to look at risk adjusted returns at the end of the day right um if i feel that the risk is lesser in a you know more mature company and is giving me similar level of returns i'll go there so i think uh, one of the things that india probably needs to do well which is one of the more simpler things to do right is uh, is to facilitate more risk capital yeah uh so so manjur we'll move to the last part which is a fairly exciting part of the of the podcast right it's pop quiz okay i'm going to ask you a few questions and you have to answer really quickly okay for for these ones it's going to be just you just have to agree you say you agree or disagree right um okay we start with this unsupervised ai can pose a potential threat to humanity agree or disagree I think there's still a lot more uh, upside unlocking that needs to happen. I'm still not convinced of the you know, oh, I, let me think of futuristic dangerous cases. I, I, there's a there's a minor possibility for that, but like, I think people are working towards progress more than more than you know other things. India will be a ten trillion dollar economy in ten years. Agree or disagree? Agree. Agree. In five years? Mm, disagree. Okay, fair enough. So between five, so it has to be more than that. Um, we will see a few dead unicorns in the next 12 months agree or disagree india a little unlikely okay india will have a tech giant uh, like one of the fang companies in the next 10 years agree or disagree uh boards <laughs> i am going to depends on what okay now choose between the following right san francisco or bangalore bangalore I mean, I think my choice is more personal. Um, uh, that this is the place where I got unlocked uh, more. I could take more risk. Uh, got interesting opportunities. Um, um, got more interesting opportunities and and uh, um, more formative years. That's why you have to choose one. Boy, all of these options are going to be hard, and you're going to have to defend being a founder or being a VC. Founder. <laughs> Satya Nadella or Sundar Pichai? Satya Nadella. Like speed or Google? Mm, again, I'm going to say both. Come on, like it depends. <laughs> it depends. Okay, the last version of this, right? First word um, that comes to mind when I say like speed. Hustle. Elon Musk. Visionary. Best Indian startup. Mm, best Indian startup. Um, I can't think of a single name like one name that shines out. I can think of multiple names uh, that shine in their own way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for example, uh, uh, innovation, right? Um, browser Stack was very in- innovative when it started. Hasura, again, uh, world leading. Um, even urban company, I'll say. uh the product comparison does not exist today in the world um postman oh my god like they they're killing it so so many companies that come to my mind but not like one shining one name <laughs> but i think uh, to my mind right there is a correct answer here geo oh yeah that's a good one <laughs> and it's a startup right technically technically <laughs> technically yeah <laughs> okay um first word that comes to mind when i say generative ai the future entrepreneurship life india um progress cool i think uh, those are those are all my questions i have a final question for you right and um, there'll be a fair number of young folks kind of watching this uh given your exposure to technology um, and the finance industry and tech in general right and innovation in general uh, what would be your advice to say a uh, 20 25 year old today right uh, what can they do to future proof themselves and uh, and basically get themselves ready I mean, um, um, honestly, one thing I say is I go through the motions of um, uh, a, number one, building depth, um, and depth in one subject. I think uh, people underestimate the value of depth today. Um, and uh, the second advice I say is learn something from scratch, try to build it up, and and for sure, you know, like most people um, that might fail and and all of that. But that's the point is the journey. Um, so i think and and of course i understand again that there's an angle to planning and and risk and all those things to it uh but there is a way um uh, that that it all can be done so these two things is what i'll say
Awesome. Manjot, thank you so much for your time today. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll do this again and we'll do a deep dive next time, right, on uh, on some of the topics. But thank you so much for uh, for being with us today. Oh, thanks for having me. This was fun. Uh, have I won the coffee hamper? I, I hope so. <laughs> I think uh, I think I'll have to buy you that coffee. <laughs> Uh, and and I will definitely do that. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Summarizing our conversation with Manjot with three top takeaways. Number one, sometimes as young founders, our highs feel very high and the lows feel very low. For our own mental health, it's very important to minimize this range. Don't let victories get to your head or failures to your heart. Number two, generative AI is truly the next big disruption. It's currently not even scratched the surface of the kind of use cases that can come out of it. Number three, AI is not a threat to humanity, not at, in its current state anyway. Thank you for joining us today. We hope to see you in the next one.